So the Around Britain CD comes out at the beginning of the year when I start the tour around the UK and it's made up of two main sections. Um, most of the music in fact was recorded in Canterbury Cathedral, completely solo, um, and then I recorded five songs here at home in, in the home studio, um, Britain songs which I'd arranged for multiple cellos and then I multi-tracked all the parts. Multi-tracking is a very old technique where basically you you have your headphones on and you have a metronomic click in your headphones and you lay down all your different parts and they all line up to that click. But not all music works like that, especially if you're doing a song. Um, the tempo has to be able to ebb and flow. It has to be able to do little speed up, little slow down here and there in order to make it song-like, basically. One, two, three. So it's a complicated process. The first thing I had to do was to lay down a vocal guide track so uh, I would just, you know, into the microphone, I would count out the One, beats of the bar two. that I would then need to play to later. Two and uh, three and a uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and a uh, one and a uh, two and a uh, three uh, one. So then when I start recording two. the cello parts, I put on the headphones, or actually I put on one headphone so I can still hear a bit of cello with the other ear. Uh, and then I lay down from the bottom upwards, always starting at the bottom because tuning wise it has to build up from the bass. And it's a, it's a relatively simple process from then on, except for one song, Since She Whom I Loved, uh, that has a complex, thick piano part. And because playing a line on the cello that went da 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 would be too difficult to control. So instead I had to start with the little finger of the left hand on the piano as it were going dom, bom, bom. And then in the gaps, ba, 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 there were the next fingers up. And so layering up this incredibly complex piano part, really almost one note at a time, one layer at a time. I also had to record every cello part in a different place in the room. Uh, which involved moving the chair, moving the microphones, moving the computer, just to get a different sound quality, just a fractionally different sound quality on each line to give it more of a sense of an ensemble. I reckon I must have spent 15, 20 hours just recording that piano part. Then when that was all done, playing the tune on the top was easy. I just did about four takes or something and, and used the fourth one, I think. And having recorded all the different separate parts, uh, I then went into the studio with my wonderful engineer, Mike Hatch, and, uh, and we spent, I guess we spent about a day or something, really just balancing, because when you play live in, a, in a, any kind of ensemble, you naturally and immediately balance. You're listening all the time to your sound relative to the sound around you, and you play louder or quieter according to what needs to happen musically. But if you're multi-tracking one line at a time, you only have headphones on, so you can't hear the proper balance. So then we had to go through quite carefully um, just balancing all the tracks to make it sound like one coherent whole. Then before the CD goes off to the factory for mastering, there are various uh, arcane processes to make sure that limits are being adhered to and that it all basically sounds like what we want to hear on a CD. Of course, the main piece on this recording is Britain's third solo suite, and that, along with the two pieces by Taverner and the Gavin Bryars piece, for completely solo cello, these are ones I wanted to record um, in an acoustic that really worked for the music. The final part of the Britain is the Kontakion, which is the hymn for the dead from the Russian Orthodox Church, and it is, it's ecclesiastical music. I suddenly got the opportunity to record in Canterbury Cathedral. This was very, very special for me because my grandfather was the dean at Canterbury many, many years ago. And in fact, at his funeral, when I was only one year old, I don't think I went, um, they played the Kontakion, the hymn for the dead from the Russian Orthodox Church. And um, most probably when I recorded it in there some 50 years, 40 years later, it was probably the first time it had been played live in that space since. We had these incredible nighttime sessions where we started after Evensong somewhere around 7, 8 o'clock and carried on recording till about 2 in the morning or something each day. And the atmosphere was quite extraordinary. It was one of those magical times of my life. We were in there completely silent, 
um, completely still and peaceful. And we tried playing in the crypt, in the nave, in the choir, in the transepts, all sorts of different places. And in fact, the, the bigger spaces were too resonant, we thought, for the, for the music that we wanted to record. Uh, so we went in the north transept, um, very, very close to the place where Thomas a Beckett was done away with all those hundreds of years ago. Um, and there it had around about a sort of a three second echo or something, which you can hear. And when I've listened back, I can hear that tail on the note that just is the sound of Canterbury Cathedral, which, which is very special for me. I'm always very aware of how many CDs there are out on the market in the world. And so I've always tried on my recordings to, um, to put stuff out there that's not available in any other way. So uh, this multi-tracking experiment with the Britain made a lot of sense. These are versions of these songs that you'll not be able to find anywhere else. <laughs> 